Hi, Dr. Lisa Thompson of DrLisaMThompson.com, and I'm coming to you from my home office outside of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Let me ask you a question. Are you still struggling with increasing your sales conversions on your blog content? You're probably doing the right things with your blog content, but you're doing it in the wrong order. So pay close attention because on this episode, the doctor is in. I'm going to give you the correct sequence to setting up your blog content so that you can start profiting from your blog posts. So stay tuned. There's nothing more frustrating when you sit down and you create a blog post and you put your whole heart and soul into it and yet you can't get even a nibble or bite. Nobody is really taking that action to purchase your product, service, or join you in business. It's pretty frustrating, isn't it? I know that it was incredibly frustrating for me. And here's the thing, is that you're doing the right things when it comes to creating the content, but you're not doing it in the correct sequence. And see, when you do it in the correct sequence, much like when you're following a recipe to baking a cake, you follow the sequence in the exact order you're going to get a delicious cake. Same thing with blog content. If you follow it in the exact step-by-step -step sequence, you're going to increase your chances of people purchasing a product, service, or joining you in business from your blog post. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about the steps that are involved when it comes to writing your content. This is the content creation formula. Step one, you have to address the problem. You need to do that right away in the beginning. Ask them questions. You see, if you're not getting anybody reading your content, they need to be aware that there is a problem. And remember we talked about in two episodes ago on The Doctor Is In, is that we need to be writing our content at level two, which is problem aware. We need to have people be aware that there is a pressing problem. Not just a pressing problem, but a big, audacious, hairy problem. From there we go to step two, which means we need to agitate the problem. That means we got to twist the knife. We've got to make this problem painful. And we're going to be using emotionally charged words when we're describing this pain. And that's why it's very important you know your perfect customer, that avatar, you know their pain points, you know that big audacious hairy problem. Because what happens then is that when you twist the knife, that's going to get them very, very disturbed. Because it is a human condition that we will do more to avoid pain than we will to gain pleasure. Once we've agitated the pain, then we proceed to step three, which is we need to create and frame a story centering around the feel, felt, found concept. So what you do is you start with, with addressing the pain, and then you're going to create some empathy saying, you know, I know exactly how you feel because I myself felt the same way. And you want to tell a little bit about your frustrations. And then you go, let me tell you what I found. Because now you're setting it up for step number four, which is providing a solution. You're now going to educate them and provide value. Now here you don't want to give them too much information where they become overwhelmed and they're not going to proceed to the next step or you're going to give them too little information and that's not going to leave them even emotionally curious or satiate them enough where they want to take the next step. So there's this balance where you want to give them enough information that is going to, you know, like when you have like a you know, like a big cut, and you put that little ointment on, that little um, antibacterial ointment on to take the sting off, but you still need that final step with putting a Band-Aid on, which is your solution. So what you have to do is typically for good content, you want to give them something anywhere between three and five pieces of good high value solutions and they're short, they're succinct, they're to the point, they're consumable enough where that it's going to satisfy their need but yet they still need more. Which leads us to step number five which is the call to action where now you can introduce your product, 
service or business. And that's how you frame everything up because you've got to get them so agitated with the problem. You've got to twist that knife so that the pain is so great that the only solution to avoid that pain is your product, service, or business. So when you keep that in mind, you're going to find that you're going to get more sales conversions. Remember, people buy products and join businesses based on emotions first. And your primary job is to paint a compelling picture using words and stories that gets your prospect physically and emotionally engaged in owning your product or joining your business. And then when you come to that solution and call to action, you want to make it fun and exciting for them to say yes. Did you find this video helpful? Leave a comment and share. Make sure you like my Facebook fan page so you never miss another episode of The Doctor's In. And there's still time to get Ray Higdon's three-minute expert course. It is the premier and most complete blogging course that will take you from newbie to expert in just three minutes a day blogging. And you can get it for 40% off by going to drlisamthompson.com forward slash holiday. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of The Doctor Is In, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.